Okay, welcome everyone for the weekly in, uh, English medium discussion. We can have almost one hour for the discussion. So we have our appointed topic from the Sutta Nipata. Before going to that, I would like to know whether any other one, before starting that, other, I would like to know anyone having any other suggestion or any other topic or any other uh, interview reports uh, for a few minutes and then we are going to go to the our conventional topic. Sir Bhante, yeah. uh, we have received one report. With your permission, I would like to present. Yeah. And in the meantime, I can see Brisbane Chatu also raising his hand. Yeah. Uh, I'll go to the report first, Bhante. Yeah, yeah. please. Ther yes, Bhante. Therwan Sunlight, walking meditation, walk outdoors, could feel the soul relaxed there were a couple of preparation on the sole before keeping the toes on the ground. The toes touched the floor in a very relaxed manner. Could feel the heel was also stretching inside, just like the toes. And the inside of front mount was also stretched just like the toes. The mind was relaxed and focused. But at the end of the path, while turning, the concentration is disturbed. As you went on with the focused walking, you take it for granted, you are focused and nothing to worry. And then the other mundane thoughts and vitakka creeps in. As if focused and relaxed, mind, were, mind has free space in between and the other thoughts can come and occupy these free spaces. Sitting meditation. Settle to observe the breathing. It's a break from the busy and non-focused routine. Before sitting to observe the breath, the mind is relaxed and so many memories and thoughts on people surface, which I would never think during the day-to-day -day activities. Made a firm decision on concentrate on breath. Couldn't feel the breath and body was silent. Yet, notice breathing is taking place subtly, not through the nose so much. Even though the mouth was closed, felt the breathing was happening through the mouth. Concentrated on these moments and sensation and the breath was felt in the nostril getting in and out. Much merit to you, Swami Mahanse. End of the report, Bhante. Good. You have enough enthusiasm or interest, so report is lively. And uh, as far as you have vitakka, that means quite a natural process from vitakka only, mental proliferation and uh, further uh, intuitive, intuitive or inferential thoughts are happening, then onward only defilement happens. So up to vitakka, no defilements. Even to the Buddha, it can happen. So then <clears throat> when it is <clears throat> triggering off from the vitaka onward, is it your will under your willpower or not, is the decisive factor. Many things, no, no, is his thoughts are uh, vitaka coming and naturally become manjana uh, or papancha or mental proliferation and uh, that you get exhausted. So you have to understand at vitaka level there is a green light, amber light and red light. You can stop at that level. Then you are a genius. You are a uh, Arya Puggala or noble person or true person. If say it's a Vitaka, everything is going to proliferate and daydreaming, fantasizing happening. That means uh, there is no second person cursing you. You are the person. So therefore you have to look into that. But uh, first of all, you have to see how Vitaka is trigger off to the mental proliferation. Uh, vichara, Vedana, Sanya. Sanskara, Vinyan. That is why we have to thin slice the time. So whenever I see something, I can have a feeling it's a good or bad, liking or disliking, no harm. If you are going to proliferate upon that, you will be subjected to the, this situation. So it may be a little too much. But present day, whenever Chandratana is uh, going to make a PhD thesis on that, uh, that is what we just discussed on the concept and reality, where how the, the Vitaka can proliferate into storytelling, fabrication, 
and uh, fantasizing, daydreaming. So artificial intelligence is that fabrication. Artificial intelligence is that proliferation. I mean, it is not bad as far as you know it. But don't appreciate wholeheartedly because it's a sickness. It's a, it's a cancer. It's a fast-growing cancer. So you can stop it. That is how the, our early ancestors, they never proliferated. I don't know whether it is knowingly or not. They are happy living in the forest. They never disturbed the forest. But the present day, uh, Joe Biden is asking uh, the Samsung company in the no, South Korea and have an 18 billion project on artificial intelligence for the present day questions. Sick. Utterly sick. Uh, I'm not telling sick. Sick. So the Buddha says to stop at that. It is happening, even for us. But we are not allowing, we are not sending kites. We are not fabricating. We are not storytelling. So that is well understood in the quantum physics, how the storytelling happens, how the fabrication happens. And then on where it go beyond, it is Buddha says, Papancha Sanya Sankha Samudha Charanti. When we become Papancha, and you get inundated by your own Papancha Sanya Sankha, ultimately <laughs> you have to have artificial, artificial breathing or oxygen because you are inundated. Very nicely, when Jnananda explained it, we are taking hours and hours, but I see many monks are sleeping when the discussion is happening because they are not interested in No harm. Because the Jnananda's product is not Srila, the Nisarnavane product, but you are very happy, we are very proud. But we are critical. So if you can stop at Papanja Vitakka level, genius. The best example is to Madhupindika Sutta. So good, please continue without uh, daydreaming, without fantasizing. You are on the correct path according to my gauging. Chatu? Uh, sir, I'm sorry, there. can you hear me? Yes, yes, please. Uh, I have a general question. I met an interesting person. He's practicing transcendental meditation. They say TM meditation. And um, I didn't know much about it. And what is a secret mantra? And they repeat it um, and they gain transcendence to, through that. That's their goal, I believe. Um, for me, that sounded like concentration meditation or samatha meditation. But when I asked the person about it, he didn't seem to, I don't think their goal was concentration at all. Or they didn't consider it concentration. Do you have any insight on what that type of meditation is? Yeah, I I saw I read a book called Placebo Effect, and in that book they have mentioned about how the transcendental meditation sent the world into madness through just a mantra, and the chief was Robert uh, no uh, Robertson, is a brain specialist, and he has written the rela- uh, response uh, relaxation response. I got out the book. I have a copy. It is very cheap. It sold three million. And it was a breakthrough. There's no magic in the meditation. Just be a mindfulness. Is nothingness is the secret. No uh, object. No mantra. No secrets. Any secret can work. No harm. But the placebo effect is the most effect. If your mind is healthy, no sicknesses. If this medicine, medical thing is going to happen, healthy mind can be more easily cured than the sick mind. So uh, I will show, I will send you the the link. Uh, recently, only I got down from the same person, Sarat. Uh, he is a person thought to give me the book called Placebo Effect. So today, people are making money out of pharmaceutical industry, making money out of mindfulness business, and everything they think something something magic there's no magic just keep in the mind and transcendental meditation never send you transcendental it's giving you the memory it is giving you the studying and all the kind of thing it was good when the Mahashiva Mahayogi is giving for the people with Maruana and hippies they found this is religious but Robertson he did the research and he saw there is no such a thing there is no no mantras. I mean, they are working. Faith is working. And what you believe working, it's very limited. And main thing is, it is preventing mindfulness. Blocking mindfulness. Mindfulness is nothing. 
But he is not directly talking about mindfulness. But we being practicing mindfulness, we can see <clears throat> Buddha make no commodity, no sellable things. There is no secret. He says, just keep the mind blank as much as possible. Uh, th then the mind heal him by itself. That is called placebo effect. Many are not happy. You can see how the corona business is happening, how the, 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 the vaccine business is happening. And instead, if you can have your own immunity, and immunity is the 13th factor, not to have corona. They never mention about that. But you have to live in a, live in a corona-free place, in a good environment, and uh, make your mind as much as at-home situation. So I hope that uh, mentioning by Robertson as well as the uh, relaxation response, uh, Chatu's question will be answered. Hello? Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. You told that uh, the, the solar map, um, the panels are not available, but I got one in the box. I, I found one, Bhante. Don't worry. <laughs> so I won't pass merits to you. <laughs> Now you now you got the idea. We got all the items. I, even I am still on the process of boxing or unpacking the things. Good, good that they are good items, but they are really Buddha 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 Rakita Amtu is going to get extraordinary extra marks or how do you call it? extras? Telling he is the person uh, recommended the items and kind. Of, I don't care because I am the father. <laughs> I am the person getting the benefits. So really, we are in. Uh, putting into use. Thank you very much, Buddha. Welcome, Bhante. Okay, now we are going to Venerable Buddha Rakhida. Yes? There is a bike. What's the uh, Nancy? In the previous Singhla discussion, I, I hear little things that seem very interesting, and it, it's a shame that we don't get it in English as well. No, no, you have the book here. Exactly. English came first. With the reality, only we got the Singhala, concept ah, right. and reality. <laughs> Um, I will show you the book. Uh, yes, I know the book, Bhante. No, no, tell me the event, uh, the case you are talking, I will give you the quotation. Okay, yes, I was just wondering what um, Bhante was saying a bit about the Anidasana Vijnana. Yeah. And if you could, for just a couple of minutes, explain what you no, understand. The, 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 Vinyananda 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 Bhante. Bhante, the author is my teacher. He says, uh, commentator is going to say, Vijnana is equal to Nibbana like kind of interpreter, it is wrong. The Nibbana is not Vijnana, but Vijnana going with that uh, um, Anidasana Vijnana. Vijnana is no more. That is Nibbana. So whenever Vijnana becomes Anidasana, it is Nibbana. So later when Vijnana resolved it, he says that is what the, the Kevada Sutta was also telling. And therefore earlier he says Vijnana is Nibbana. But Anidasana is uh, Mukadda Visheshana Padetika in English. Visheshana. Adjective. adjective. When you put the adjective Anidasana, Nibbana. And exactly the same thing, Adi Sankar, he told, Brahman without any, any exemplification, without any reflection, without any image, is the pure form of Brahma. That's almost like Nibbana. That's Advaita. Because Bodhi found the danger by understanding Advaita as Nibbana is wrong. But some other person told, please, Buddha accepted the Anidasana Vijnana as Nibbana. It's, a, it's another shade of Nibbana, a shade of uh, Vijnana, but Vijnana unexpressed. Vijnana unsupported. Vijnana unexemplified. Vijnana without an image. It's a Nibbana. It's a Sankara also without that Nibbana. Sanya also without Anidasana become Nibbana. Anything the negative of anything, either dark matter or dark matter, uh, 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 the, uh, dark energy, is the negative of the matter. Without that, matter can't live. And the dark matter, dark energy, explain about the 99% of the space. Only 1% matter. We are fighting and warfare and everything on the 1%. So therefore, the, this is very nice and this is the best book. Collected all the suttas related to uh, you find it the this thing, Tripitaka. But lucky enough, there was one person before him, uh, E.R. Sarachandra. He had a very nice drama, three dramas in Sri Lanka, Singabahu, uh, Pemato Jayati Soko, uh, Maname. Uh, he was the first. 
when my nyana the narrow it down the utterly to the theravada and this is a genius this book and he is talking about and he says how we the commentators are buddha buddha uh, buddha goes but he is giving a fair fair how do you call uh, discussion fair dialogue and we also can criticize you know nyananda as well as the buddha goes because we also have some experience of when when he is here yes i know he is here but he is not here i have some kind of a space for him if he is attraction for me every matter is having having and not having space as far as it is related to us he talking about the not having not having a wife not having a money not having a right meal not having fame not having game i mean we have a space in the mind and that is more related to nibbana than the having a wife and having a money having a dinner and having other amenities so negative you have to understand and then negative also fading off fading off to anidasana not exemplified that is called unmanifested in 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 the official translation unmanifested Thing, things are there unmanifested just like the bottom of the iceberg tip is manifested so that is what we were discussing for the last hour thank you mante um could one uh another as well way of understanding it is that it's anidasana it's non manifestative because different um devatas and brahmanas cannot see the consciousness of an arahant no any consciousness at the beginning anidasana eh? after slowly slowly it become manifested so you have to go back to the zero zero is always anidasana anidasana when it slowly slowly become manifested and just like a just like a cell is growing and at the beginning one single cell and when it's parturiting so and you become a olympic runner so you have to see the potential in the egg cell or we do the stem cell and they have nothing to brahma nothing to the, they are all your creation but the buddha says go to the zero and go to the end of it if it is possible again it become anidasana what do you what is the beginning of the breath what is the end of the breath anidasana nibbana is lying there so we are chasing behind the breath there's no other way but while well, occasionally you may see the beginning of the breath and the end of the breath that means the bell shape curve you see the tip and slowly slowly coming down at that the zero level datum line everyone in nibbana so end of beginning of the breath is nibbana end of the breath is nibbana middle only we can say long breath short breath we home call left nostril right nostril everything they are nidasana so anidasana is the sense of um when you cannot place it sort of unmanifested no exam- example no epithet you can give it does not indicate it is not available it is available but not showing as if you have some qualities you don't know not manifested yet so once it come everyone say oh he's a genius and you are a born genius no one knows we which one knows we are each one of nibbana we which are not is a genius but we are talking about the manifested qualities we it's a, it's a trivial so we have to understand the humanity we are human uh, whatever it may be whether manifested or not so potential wise possibility wise we are equal but manifested wise we is a man is a man as a girl that is a king he is a subject and all this nonsense of the manifested one so the satipasala we have the idea we have the birth right to become mindful we are mindful whether you like it or not but we are just going and say we just catalyzing it nothing we give you, you are too young you are too young so you have to get little older you have to live on the earth little bit okay buddhagata buddhagata hamdro Uh, please continue we we spend about uh, uh, 20 minutes so uh, we're on the 12th verse in this um, sutta so that by which they might speak of him worldlings as well as ascetics and brahmans is not esteemed by him therefore he is not stirred up by words so here um 
the Buddha is pointing out how um, an arahant, you know, the object of the mind of an arahant or uh, the way the arahant is thinking, the stream of consciousness of the mind, the uh, the interest is not is not in um, is not in what other people might say of of him. So they they might criticize uh, the arahant, um, they might judge him, but uh, he he is not uh, distracted by what they have to say because he doesn't value it particularly because. Uh, he values his own, um, you know, he's, he's, he's valuing what's happening for himself uh, in the, the here and now. He's not judging it. And um, so he's not, he's not thinking about uh, what's happening for him. He, he's just knowing what's happening for him. He's, not obser- he's, not, he's observing what's happening for himself, but he's not judging what's happening for himself. So he's not saying, oh, uh, I don't deserve this. This is not fair. Uh, I'd, I, I, I'd rather something better. You know, there, there's, a, there's not that gap f- between what's, uh, what's happening and that he wants something else. He wants it to be otherwise. He doesn't want it to be the way it is. So this wanting is removed, and therefore there's just this experience of things being as they really are. And uh, this doesn't mean that, like... Um, that accidents don't happen or that uh, difficulties don't arise. Uh, they do, but they're dealt with accordingly. You know, they're experienced as experiences. So uh, if I get rained on, I get rained on. If it's a cold day, it's a cold day. Um, but th- there isn't that judgment, I don't deserve to have this cold day happening or that I don't deserve this rain to be raining on me. Things are arising because of causes and conditions. So uh, one isn't uh, subject to... The, the judgments of others. So in this way, uh, he's not stirred up by the words of people, whoever those people are, whether they are, uh, as he calls it here, whirlings or ascetics or Brahmins. So uh, he understands the world the way it really is. And um, so this is a comment that uh, that uh, Damajiva and I often go talking about is, is that that uh, news, a lot of the news is not really news anymore. It's just entertainment. So uh, instead of giving reports in the news, um, they give opinions in the news. And uh, as a result, people get stirred up by these opinions. But if a reasonable person was asked in in court, um, you know, they would say, well, the news is false then the judge might say, well, why do you believe it? It's not, it's not actually meant to be truth and verifiable. It's just meant to be opinion, and it's just meant to be entertainment. So uh, we can be mistaken when we sit down at, at 9 o'clock in the evening to watch the 9 o'clock news, and we think we're going to get you know, uh, solid, verifiable information that is not opinionated. But in reality, we we get opinions because it's a lot cheaper. Uh, If you have to do very careful investigation and reporting, this is very expensive. It's very, very cheap to have an opinion. The same with... uh, with uh, having an expert opinion on something, um, you may have to spend a half a, half of your life to develop the the knowledge and the insight and the experience into something. Whereas um, you can be like straight off of the street, and if somebody says, "What do you think of uh, this?" and you have an opinion, it, it's that cheap. So um, similarly, you know, here in this verse, we can see how important it is to. Um, you know, keep our mind on our own business, and and not to be uh, not entertain the opinions of others, especially those that are not informed, that are not knowledgeable, that are that that don't know the path. You know, they they are entitled to their own opinion, but it doesn't mean that we should uh, include or bring into our own heart their opinion about things. And in this way, we just mind our own business and and get on with the practice. And we see things as they really are. Seeing things as they really are is that that this is just an opinion. This is entertainment. This is a superficial understanding of what's happening. That this is an opinion that's full of um, 
wrong views or just views and opinions and ideology, or it's full of craving. So the, the central theme of the Sutta Napada is the role of views and the role of craving in the world and how the, the, the person who is knowing, the mindful person, the, the arahant, is ultimately cutting through these uh, views and these cravings and other things like defilements and so forth. And they know the world as it really is. Whereas most other people, in this case the worldlings, the Brahmins and the ascetics of the other sex, are like they just don't know. So whatever they have to say is not of any significant importance and we shouldn't take it into our hearts and be stirred up. So again, in the modern times, we have to think about things like social media and like I get asked at times, oh, you know, do you think I should I should uh, put, you know, my time and effort into um, commenting or, or um, you know, on, into Twitter or into Instagram or some other thing? And, and like I'm saying, well, what's the benefit? You know, can you can you get by in your life without these things? You know, how can you use them as a tool that's successful and useful uh, for yourself? And if it's not a, a use, if it's not of benefit, if it's not of utility value, why, why, why are you involving? Why do you give any time to this? You know, oh, because everybody else is doing it. You know, everybody else is doing a lot of things. Do you need to do it for yourself? And it can be very destructive, especially if we can't distinguish between uh, reality and other people's opinions. And this matters a lot, especially for younger children. So uh, especially for young girls, especially between the ages of like, you know, 11 and 13, where they're forming their sense of self-identity, that if they are on things like Instagram and Twitter, but especially Instagram, where, you know, they post a picture of themselves and then people uh, give a like or a dislike around that picture, then this is this is in this like in this case these are whirlings giving their opinion. Oh, I you know I give a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and this is hugely detrimental to people's you know to that child's understanding of themselves, and and this is really resulting in measurable impact, negative impact on on the person. Because they take sincerely their uh, that that uh, foolish advice, that foolish feedback, those foolish words, it goes to the heart. They don't know how to protect themselves. So uh, this this is really very very toxic. So we can see how um, foolish uh, opinion, foolish advice taken into the heart, especially if the person is immature is extremely damaging and it's extremely toxic. And uh, I was, you know, I, I, I pay attention to it because uh, this leads to a lot of things like um, anorexia, to, uh, you know, arguments with, with, with family members and parents because they, they, uh, they feel like, oh, I'm not pretty enough or I'm not popular enough when there's nothing wrong with the child. The child is perfectly a decent person, a, a normal person. And in many cases, the more, the more pretty they are, the more they feel like that, that I'm not pretty enough. And uh, people who are critical can be extra critical of more attractive girls, for instance, and pick out a feature or something like that and... and say that this could be better or something like that. And it's, it's instead of the child being outside playing with other children, they are spending their time alone with uh, their devices, you know, uh, feeding on opinions, feeding on uh, what whirlings and ascetics and Brahmins have to say about themselves or other people. And this completely distorts their sense of reality, their sense of well-being and this is uh, really stirring up their heart so we can see how significant this kind of a statement is that you know for the for the hour hand for these people on the path uh, what others have to say is not esteemed and therefore they are not stirred up by words 
So this is a very profound message even into this modern time. And um, if, if anybody has younger children and they're listening, they should really make sure that their kids are absolutely not allowed near any of these apps, especially Instagram, you know, especially for young girls, uh, especially till they're more than 15 years old, because this is really leading to severe mental health issues. I'd be very happy to hear what Mahatero has to say. So to bring back home, I will just chant the, the particular stanza. Uh, the numbering of the stanzas changed from the Bhikkhu Bodhi's book and the Buddha Jayanti. Buddha Jayanti is a number set 863. Bhikkhu Bodhi marked it as 861. Yena nang vajju putujana ato samana brahmana tangtasa apurikhata tasma vadesu nejati. Uh, the, the the worldly beings may be a Brahma or be a Brahmana or be a uh, Putujana. Uh, they they have their own likings and dislikings. They have their own defilements. Uh, and talk about you. You are good. You are bad. You are this and that. They are talking with their own holded view and. Uh, He do not know he is talking with his own bloody stirred mind. He is talking with his own blooded, uh, the clouded mind, puddled mind. And uh, therefore, if you are a saint, you are not carried away by what they are praising or they are blaming. Because they are talking with, for their own gain. He really tried to explain, Murder Crawford, uh, when he was running... Uh, Fox News. And he was utterly misleading and twisting the truth. And in the court, he said, so we are not giving news, we are giving entertainment. Why are you listening? Why are you looking? We are not worried about the news. Every one of us needs something cos cosmetized uh, or facelifted and put like, little condiments and kind of thing. So ultimately, we are we can't live without news. We can live without feed, food. So he he make news into entertainment. Whole world, whole language, every communication is a uh, kind of exaggeration. So therefore, that exaggeration don't carry it away. Don't take it. But you have your own teacher, and you listen to him and follow him, or you listen to the mindfulness, follow it. And there is a kind of a pivotal point. There is a kind of a benchmark. But you have to listen to the others. Everyone is sick person. Mentally sick. They are talking, 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 talking. And they wish to talk about others. They never talk about themselves. So you will have part and partial of the discussion. You have to understand. Sorry fellows, just chatterbox. And today enough media. Leave aside the Instagram and the Facebooks. They are completely misled. And young people... So for the last few weeks or few months, I was so concerned, not due to my uh, immediacy, but about the abuse, uh, adverse childhood experience. And many people go to the wrong habits and misuse of their life and committing suicide and killing, serial killing. And due to the, basically, as Sigmund Freud mentioned, their early childhood experience. So I was at the beginning lost. But uh, when Buddharakit only told me 10 points, whereby people, we can understand. So we are going to have a you know, national level of research to understand how much these adverse childhood experience exposed children are going to the bad habits and uh, drugs and going to the prison and kind of thing. But there's a one teacher, he came and told, but it is true, we can understand when the child is very uh, aggressive and overactive, we can just, uh, instead of chasing from the class, we can just go to him and say, at home it's a hell. So therefore, we have to understand. And so I was little, little concerned about that. One interesting point, Bhante. Some people, are with the, both the parents are there, they are with the sound background and they are faring well. But they are a single parent children and uh, the family problems. And they, some people completely succumb to this kind of a drugs or misuse and misheb, misbehavior. But there is a category, even with, even with, 
the adverse childhood experience, they are faring well, Bhante. They are faring well in the class and they maintain certain amount of moral shame and the moral fear. They are the most wanted people of the mindfulness. Don't tell about the, don't talk about the, only the negative and deteriorated kind. Don't talk about the superior and uh, people, those who need no any time, any help. But there is a kind, they are struggling and tightrope walking. So we have to give little experience for them. Mindfulness is the basic. So that understand, they manage due to their own wisdom. Even the ch- mother is not a good character, the father is not good character, they are maintaining. The Buddha is addressing them. They are in the wavering situation. So how can we understand? I thought we have a research must have two sides. One thing, go to the prison and distribute the question and say, how much of you, they are in the prison, you have affected by early childhood experience, bad, adverse. And there are some people, they have not exposed with the adverse childhood, but still they are in the prison. There are some people with a very sound background at home, and good education is still taken drugs. And some people have intermediate. They had some. Either they have fallen into the wrong trap or not fallen into the wrong trap. So therefore we have to have a civilians also the same question. Yeah? And we have to follow at least three years, two years to see what is the, what is happening. So therefore the people are telling that he mentioned about the girls. Now... American people or some other people, they are measuring what is the beauty is. In the Victorian age, they want to have the big hip and good breast. And uh, the, that's a thing. This is the way, the Sri Lankan way, they told that the hip must be very thin and the, uh, the buttocks and they are very fat and the breast and shanky legs. That's, and they have, 20 years ago, they prescribed it. And today girls are just following it. Is it really beauty or not? It doesn't matter. And this, this is the pharmaceutical industry, due to beautification. They having uh, the beauty queen contest. People even without meal, they go and just photo them and say, this is the real beauty. So we have to believe now what, what these foolish people are telling but to the darkness, whatever the girl equal to the sex. That is happening in the darkness, not in the beautification. So this is the utter world. And education exactly the same. Health is exactly the same. Law is exactly the same. Money is exactly the same. Media is exactly the same. Six detrimental trends. So each time I go to America, I have my fair time I spend to see these detrimental, this is also I learned by uh, the Ferguson, Neil Ferguson. Now he also in the trap, I think. He's an English fellow teaching in America. He says, where the world is running. And this is to, to 2,600 years ago. Don't believe what the people are telling. They are talking about their cancer in their mind. But don't dictate also. You have to just listen, but don't take it to your head. Don't heed just listen and stop at that level. Suti sutamattam bhavisati. Don't carry it away. Don't send kites. Don't proliferate. Don't so put pendles and storytelling and kind of thing. That is the, and, and that is their, not, not, not their mistake. Because you are entertaining. You are entertaining a news. News is not news. And now Sri Lanka is a huge newsmaker. And talking about Sri Lanka, completely bankruptcy and gone, but we don't feel such a thing. Our Satyavasala is unaffected. And things are happening, but making news. Unlucky enough, there are other five or countries already is zinking. America is the biggest, China is the next. And all the countries are sinking. This is Singapore, the Sri Lanka is sinking. Pakistan is sinking. They make news. Because news media is their hand. So therefore imagine you are living in the forest. No SMS, no Instagram, no media. So then 
So when Jnananandi used to say, media is a poisoned arrow, it search and go and hit on your heart, like a cruise missile or thermal missile, and searching and go into it, and he says, you see, I heard the news, my mother is sick. Now I have no meditation, because I have to go and visit the mother. How the news came? You keep the phone in your heart, the so phone is bringing the news, and then onward, finished. Well, you see that in my, uh, our place, in our village, our village monkey is being killed by a Muslim. Finished. Everything is finished because he has to go and do something. Utter nonsense. Because the world is run by news today. And that is how girls become succumb. And the, the, when you be, become sick, you succumb to the situation. When you are listening to news, you succumb to the situation. When you are using money, you succumb to the situation. You go to the court, you succumb to the situation. So, Venerable Jnana Rama says, don't go to low suits. Never. If called, you have to go there, but don't believe them. And don't use money. Don't read newspapers. But you see how difficult it is. It appears like we are barbaric. We are not uh, socialized, social enough, so we are cut off. You can find incense sticks. Uh, you are not in this thing, but we are by reading also we become socialized. Yes, but you see what is what the Buddha is telling. What the others telling is they are expressing their madness in the mind. They are they are waves, they are proliferation. So otherwise they have to go for counselling. They have to listen. The, the, some person, you have to pay 30 pounds per hour to listen. Counsellor is another sick person, another, another man. And you go there and counsellor is before sleeping, he also going to another counsellor because he has accumulated so much of muck throughout the day. So this is how the psychiatry. So imagine mindfulness. You are listening to your own. And whenever you are listening to someone, you understand, stop at listening level. Don't, when uh, Jnanada use a very nice term, don't ruminate it. You know, regurgitation, vomiting and eating again. That's all the um, romant, uh, romantic, how do you call the cows, eh? cows and, and that whole family have four stomachs. First thing is you put the bulk. And again in the night time, chewing the cud and then go to the second uh, pool it is a big pool having a lot of micro germs micro this thing they are eating the, the organic matter and then we, they lose the track and the latter part of the stomach is digestive tract is killing all the bacteria and getting the protein this is how it happens so exactly we can't live without news that is the, that's a crime so, Ananya Gatova, Rukamula Gatova, Sunyagara Gatova, we feel like deprived. We feel like cornered. We feel like unsocial. And therefore, I am not telling not, not only go to the forest and just wait. Just see, listen, but stop at seeing at seeing level. Ditte ditte matta, sute sute matta. But you can understand he who proliferate that particular subject is a sick person, is a biased person, who is given that germ to that particular person, also innocent, but they, are, they have their weaknesses in the mind. So by reading books and kind of thing, uh, you can understand what a kind of a fool who has compiled the book. Very easy. And the best thing is interview reports. Now to often give the interview report so that you can express yourself, so other person can understand, because we are talking on mindfulness, we are talking about the breath. We are talking about the walking meditation. So we can understand how much story we are fabricating. Storytelling. That's called Sampapalapa. Trivialist talks. Uh, the Joseph Goldstein said, pap, 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 Sampapalapa. Just chocolate, 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 chocolate. And for that, uh, I know it is, uh, I get blamed, but the females are more succumb to situation. Females are telling, males are not talking. And ultimately, they become the hotbed for cancer or hotbed for defilements. So they are for all the artists, all that kind of, uh, the how do you call, aesthetic part. 
they they entertain that kind of minds. I mean, without that, you go mad. So you have to have, to have soap opera. You know, opera. You nothing to see. You just go there and wait. When there are girls without panties, come and jump. But that's it. You have to do soap opera. So this is the way. So I I learned them from conspiracy theory, and I learned them from uh, Neil Ferguson, and now I am not interested in. But I know what is the news media is, what is the discussion is. Yesterday, day before, we had the uh, UN uh, Environmental Day. I delivered my messages. I told that uh, people are using the mindfulness for healing and therapy, but we had to think about the preventative. And for that, world is mature enough. So please, uh, the, by billions of money, you can do nothing. But each and every thought moment, each and every moment you become mindful, you make good vibration to the world. You are not making news. Mindfulness never make news. All the others are making news. So he luckily he mentioned about the anorexia. And uh, how, what happened to the girls today? When I go to foreign countries, I see immigrants in Sri Lanka, immigrants in other countries. Uh, what an agony for children, my parents. They are in a cultural shock. Because they have seen their own parents, they see their own second generation. The, no unbridgeable gap. And the Italian, they say, 40 years, how run, country went into the bad things with the mafia and all the kind of things. Elderly people say, earlier we also the same. We had senses, we had the moral values. Now, no. So, within one life, I never thought that will be come into so much of manifestation in front of my eyes. It's 70s. So, if I am to live another 20 years, the way of information now I am gathering is completely new. My early childhood friends and the batchmates and the relatives, they never understand. So, they appear like I am coming from the Saturn or something uh, alien-like. You have to be in the shit to be citizen. If you are trying to take this stanza as a reality, you become naturally alien. People don't like you. You are not making news. Very interesting. Very interesting. I use the term uh, conscious army. Well, last the retreat came one person from England. He told, whenever you mention conscious army, I had so much because I can understand what is happening in UK. We have to be mindful, no? Practice, 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 practice. That's it. Of course, these talkings are, books are good. We have to take time. But one hour per week is quite enough. That's all my interpretation. Maybe I'm talking too much. So earlier on, we were talking about uh, Vitaka and Vichara. And uh, again, uh, Vitaka is this uh, like uh, lighter talk to the mind of, uh, you need to talk your mind onto the object and uh, like initial initial uh, we, t we talk is like initial effort and then sustained effort so uh, you know um, like these these are very tender uh, qualities of the mind and if if we're we're constantly being distracted by um, other voices then that's that's like uh, you you can't allow the the vichara you can't allow it to develop so um, that inner uh, voice is is um, getting drowned out by other voices, and um, a mechanism in in how younger girls are getting so damaged by this uh, Instagram. It's not so much even the time that they spend watching the Instagram uh, or the posting or something like that. It's the amount of time that they spend obsessing and thinking about, uh, oh, I wonder if somebody saw my posting or if somebody saw my comment and what do they think about it? So it's this self-judgment and self-criticism uh, sustained over long, long periods of time that's so corrosive and dangerous. So the same with this Vitaka and Vichara. If we 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 don't ha if we don't have manageability over these mechanisms within our mind of Vitaka and Vichara, they can work against us. If we we can have them in a positive, a virtuous cycle or in a in a detrimental cycle. So uh, in in a in Buddhism, we try to train and teach the mind how to have initial 
and then sustained contact with uh, healthy and suitable objects for the mind to grow and develop. However, if you give the mind unhealthy, unsuitable objects, then it will malignant. It'll go malignant. So uh, what you what you put in is what you get out. So garbage in, garbage out. In Buddhism, we we give our mind healthy things. We give it the mind nutrition. And uh, in in uh, things like Instagram, especially for younger children, it's absolutely toxic and extremely extremely dangerous. Literally, people. Young kids are dying because of this, because of uh, we, we didn't really have very high suicide rates in children under 10 years of age, especially girls, until very recently. And it can be really uh, linked back to things like Instagram. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just saying this, uh, it's, it's very disturbing. And I was very fortunate myself to grow up in a time where we didn't have uh, social media, we didn't, we didn't have internet, we had um, uh, free-range play where I grew up running around playing with my neighbors and cousins and friends like, like I see here in the villages around Mitrigala. And I can identify with how healthy and natural this is because this is actually how the, the human has um, developed over, you know, tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. And uh, it's only in such a recent time in the last 20 years that we've given children, um, you know, devices and, and phones and tablets. And it's only in the last 10 years that we've given them Instagram. And we can really see that uh, that the change is directly correlated to to these events. So, you know, this advice of the Buddha to uh, not you know not to take to not take seriously what other people are saying about ourselves and especially when we're on the path uh, is is very important so uh, again when when i visit overseas even as a, as a buddhist monk as an adult um you know people these days uh, find it uh, um you know that they can be very cynical that uh, religion is is something um from antiquity or from the past and um, they they make sort of um, intellectual comments or snide remarks about um, the monastic life, about about celibate life, um, about why we go against the the norms of um, a so-called material world. And uh, if if I was to take seriously the criticism that I hear, um, I, I would no longer be a monk because. Uh, it, it would go to my heart and, and destroy my mind. Um, instead, I let that toxic uh, sort of stuff aside and, and just make it, it's not my business. And I don't bring it into my heart. And this is an active and a dynamic process. It's not an, a process of numbing or being indifferent. It's, it's a process of minding my own business and um, knowing what the practice is, knowing what the path is, and just sticking to it, and just saying, you know, so, so fair others according to their own karma. However, if, if parents are listening and, um, you know, they have children, uh, you know, you really, really keep them away from, uh, particularly Instagram and Facebook. These two are, are you know, um, worse than uh, many, many kinds of poisons. And we have mental poison these days, not just physical poison. And we have mental dangers, not just uh, physical dangers. And uh, we should really, really be very, very careful. So to to f to give our, our children the best opportunity to grow, and that that would mean not having Instagram and and Facebook. So even with the Instagram, Facebook, if you can mindful message, we are using Facebook for mindfulness now. So they can they may develop some kind of resistance, but may the intermediate. I will give you a little uh, get, take two minutes and explain how the Theravada tradition is talking about this vitakka vichara uh, in uh, jhana practice. Sometimes we cut jhana into four. In the first one, we have vitakka vichara peeti sukhe ekagata. The second one in the fourth uh, four system method, you lost vitakka vichara, and then in the second jhana, piti sukha ekagata. And the third one, you lost vitakka vichara piti sukha ekagata. And the fourth one is upekha ekagata. But many times in the Tripitaka, you find the first jhana is with vitakka vichara piti sukha ekagata. There's another type in the fifth system, 
measuring by five, only you lost vitakka and which are available. Avitakkaṁ avichāraṁ. And then you, second, third jhāna, you lose vitakka vichāra both. Imagine the second jhāna in the panchakanaya, you have no vitakka, but which are available. That's the point where your directed dispositions, your past memories, your habituation come. Presently you have no root. But mental proliferation, daydreaming happening. So I was earlier, even under the Pandita Saidos, uh, I preferred the fourth method, the losing vitakka which are both. But there are some points, you can't miss the point. You are missing the vitakka, but which are available. In the uh, second jhana. Third jhana, you lose both vitakka and vichara. It is local, just like the second jhana in the fourth system. So, where we can understand, sometimes our mind is in a habituation of thinking, but there is no root cause presently. That means due to the past habituation, or directed dispositions. This is psychiatric situation. And many misunderstand it. Many things, I see my past mother, I see some parts of the brain, parts of the skull and the hands, or criminals, I can't relate it. They are vichar only, I mean the regurgitation, sorry, uh, ruminating only, that's a mental habituation. And they are byproducts in our mind. We never expose it to that. Psychiatrics explain them in a completely bizarre no, it is not a bizarre. It is some relations are there, but there is a catharsis. You are renewing. You are you are removing. You are you are library shots. You are shit. It's removing. More you release, more catharsis. Uh, but you may run mad before that. Think how come that? I am living in Sri Lanka. My mind is thinking about other country or other people, other places. But it's a way of catharsis. So that catharsis is painfully slow. How can I let that pass the wrath, the carp, to come out? How can the teacher pacify, tell him, don't worry, let, the, let it go out. Keep the present moment on, on the mind as pure as possible. The Buddha says four kind of effort. The first part is, Anupannanam papakanam akusalanam dhammanam pahanaya chandan janeti vayamati viryang arabati chittam pagganhaji padhati. First and foremost of the mindfulness is keep the stream of consciousness pure for the moment, here and now. But still, upannanam papakanam akusalanam dhammanam can happen. Your habituation is still in the mind and they start to wrath, start to pass, start to carp. So that part, if you have no a healthy uh, good interpretation or good interview, definitely you take it negative. Sometimes they are magical powers. Sometimes they are uh, the clairvoyance and the uh, kind of thing. These are the things ap appreciated by artificial intelligence. They think I have a genius powers to this and that. Shit. They have to understand. It's a, it's a wrath. It's a cup. It's a, it's, a, it's a pus. So you can share with others. But don't generalize it. That generalization is a crime. And the government is going to promote the artificial intelligence. I mean, they are not bad. Sometimes very good, sometimes very bad. But if you are going to appreciate it, uh, younger generation is succumb to the situation. And I appreciated Facebook for mindfulness. Mindful school, I appreciated. I never open my Facebook. I never go to the WhatsApp. A count is there. Because he uh, told, you need not, you can manage definitely with the email. Anyone wish he can talk in the phone or email. They are there. Not that uh, they are bad. Initiated and government appreciated it. Because they can make entertainment. The young people will kill themselves. They will have the serial killing. Because they are living in a Disneyland. They are not living at their home. And they are Disneyland products. So mindfulness also, I wish to have a Disneyland in, in Kaduela. 
people to come and play and all the kind of thing. And uh, the parents can understand. They come and they, one day girl came and she was suicidal. And parents, are, she, the mother do not know. I ask. She told, I am to go through my ordinary level exam, but I am preparing for the advanced level, but I have enough. I sometimes feel detrimental. I feel sometimes suicidal. Then I told, I, can, I will tell you one thing. There are some peer group in Satipasala, you go join. And three weeks later, I saw he came, just came from the river, completely soaked. One day, today is the first day I jump into the river with this, uh, my normal clothing. And then Asita came, man, this is the girl, Bante, she told she was suicidal. But now, I told, now you have a job. You have to talk with other peer girls and tell there is a happiness. There is an innocent happiness. Not by brooding upon this uh, suicidal and hating parents and kind of thing. I mean, it is natural, but mindfulness is there. So the mindfulness, Instagram, no problem. Facebook, no problem. And uh, WhatsApp, no problem. Because even with the wavering mind, mindfulness is giving a stepping stone. So, but lucky, unlucky enough, our mindful trainers and uh, uh, master trainers are not skillful. They don't know the, what the mindfulness is. It's a very vast array. So now it's a real uh, refinement, for, refinement for me. Being in the forest, now I am exposed to environmental problem, drug addiction, uh, suicidal, serial killing. Otherwise, we are not concerned about that. But we are not only just concerning about the entertainment. We have an answer. Everyone says these questions will be resolved only with an answer. And very interesting point. I am going to stop my talk. Huh? Very interesting point told about the last time in the rehabilitation of the drug addiction. They told that uh, using on cocaine and the chemicals she mentioned. And uh, that can addiction and the brain damage can happen. Instead, uh, the Western or the Americans may be, they are selling alternative methadoform. Instead of cocaine, you take methadoform. And it, methadone. Yeah, methadone and uh, no harm. So when we are telling the mindfulness as the remedy, they don't like. You understand the point? So UN says they never heard about mindfulness as a remedy for uh, the drugs. So we are now having a, a national level this thing to say, even for the drug addicted people, even with the adverse childhood experience, mindfulness has answer, but it is nothing. No, no pharmaceutical, no commodity. Exactly the same for the prisoners. I told the second person, the killing other person with the, uh, this thing, how to call capital punishment, the, the, it is uncommon in Buddhist jurisprudence. It's a Roman Catholic law. The, the, I can't remember the fellow, he always fight. One can't decide to kill the other person, whatever the legal way. Then you are in that, you are with that uniform. We have to come with the Buddhist jurisprudence. I mean, we, how can I decide the other person is a criminal to be killed? Not. He, he, he was astonished. Then he said, this is a, we have to have an answer, a solid answer, but don't look at from the present day context. Present day context is rotten. But we are miracles, still we are living. Still we are living. I, I, in my Vesak message, I told, I am, sh I am very happy, I am living now. By now you would have gone. The way the trap has been set. So not only that, we are selling mindfulness. We give a drugs, we give a mindfulness as a drug, not methadone. They are not happy. Sorry, I have taken a little long time. Yes. Thank you for that sharing that, Bhante, and you as well, Bhante. Um, <clears throat> yeah, re relating to the verse um, and some uh, personal experience that, and some insights that might be helpful for fellow uh, walkers on the path. Um, sometimes people with wrong views in the world uh, can be very critical of others walking the path of Dhamma because they don't understand uh, why we would want to 
um, do less of things, uh, renounce or um, go inwards. And when the world is always running forwards and going outside, then sometimes if people don't understand why others would choose to go the other direction, um, then they might become very cynical, as Bhante said. Um, and one line of a verse, a very famous verse that uh, I remembered, was simply um, samano hoti parang vihe tayanto. So he is not a samana who hurts others. Um, and the the clear kind of message of that is that if you hurt others, you are not a samana. But another way of looking at it is also that by being a samana, you are not actually hurting others, um, even if they feel hurt by you because you leave them or because um, you decide to walk a path that doesn't conform with their ideas of what's best for the world. And so just remembering and having faith in the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha um, can allow us to be a lot less shaken by what people of the world say and how they criticize us. And it allows us to stay strong on the path and um, continue the way of the recluse. Thank you. The, the, to, as a comment, uh, Buddha mentioned that it is apanaka patipada, non-reactive, uh, non uh, when the jnana ponika put it into the power of mindful and non-coercive. People are very bad. Who cares? Because due to that, we ca- we see the external example. The art is very bad, but you have to be very thorough about that. Quantum physics is very bad. You have to be thorough about that. Uh, the chaos theory is very bad. We have to be thorough about that. Then only we can understand, we can overcome them. He sent me a, a case that uh, she's been raped and kind of thing. And the whole judge, the panel, the jury, and the girl says, I can't, cannot be recovered, permanent damage. Foolish. All the damage will be recoverable. If you know mindfulness, there is no such a damage. And they started with, I will never be the same person again. Even without raping, you are not the same person in the next moment. That is very understood. And once that you step over, oh, huge crime. It is simple. You see the animal world. It is not a crime. One female may be screwed by five, six males. It is not a crime. Bloody shit law is wrong. <laughs> Bloody shit law is wrong and making news. So they are, oh, yes, I am I'm happy to listen from America. You are very sluggish. Um, thank you, uh, Bante, Bante, and Bante for all of those uh, wonderful uh, comments uh, and uh, this wonderful discussion. Yeah. Um, speaking of Facebook, when I was in uh, high school, I got cyberbullied a lot on social media. And this is about the time I would say that Facebook was like really exploding and Instagram was kind of taken off too. And I I can see like you know, how it would be beneficial if you were using it mindfully, but how many people can use it mindfully? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is, that's too. What do you call yeah. Sheila? Yeah, there's not many people that can use social media mindfully, I think, so. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I got, you know, cyberbullied, and I got bullied a lot in, in, in high school and middle school, too, and so... It's just part of the reason I think why I came to the Buddhist teachings is because I was trying to figure out, you know, why, like, do I suffer so much? Like, why do these bad things happen? And most importantly, it, once I got into the Buddhist teachings, it kind of helped me forgive those people because I had a lot of hatred towards those people for what they did to me. So, um, but yeah, the the world of social media, it's, it's very, you know, people back in the time of the Buddha were being very externally focused already so when we have these things it's just a way of being more and more externally focused so you know sometimes when we say like you know um we we as i i guess you know recite blessings or, or verses uh from from the poly texts you know we say like uh, the dhamma you know timeless unaffected by time well you know that's very true the dhamma is unaffected by time it's timeless so no matter how many more possessions or how many new things come out like new cell phones new social media apps all that stuff people are still being externally focused and so i mean it's it's just a way of being more they they just use these things to focus externally even more so uh there's a saying by bante nyanadipa um uh 
the Danish monk that lived here that died a couple of years ago, he said, uh, giving up everything is the only safety. And, um, or that's a quote that's been attributed to him. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, it's, you see that, you know, that, uh, being so externally focused is just causing you suffering and it's causing a lot of pain for other beings too. So, uh, it's actually safe to, to renounce the world and to give up sensual pleasures. It's, it's bringing you to a state of safety. Yeah. You're still sluggish. You are still uh, living in America. No. You're still in jet lag. So you have to come and work from 10.30 to 11.30. So in, in, in the time of... It? Coming back to in the time of the Buddha, uh, uh, people were villagers, and uh, what, other, what other villagers thought of you was very, very important. So the same in, in the mechanism is similar in, in this Instagram, is what, what other people think of you is very important. And the, uh, the emotion that's being uh, developed is, is shame. And uh, so shame is, is I, I am... I am better than, I am equal to, or I am superior to. So it's, it's you know, once that conceitedness arises, then the expressed feeling is shame. And then from shame arises fear and anger. And uh, so if that anger is has no target, uh, it, it, it re- starts to uh, reflect backwards and find into self-hate. So that's why there's a mechanism towards, you know, this anorexia and, and, and self-hate. So, uh, uh, you know, so this, this, this mechanism is a kind of an eternal path. And if you go down that wrong path, then you'll experience um, like torture and, and great self-harm. Um, and as, as Venerable Mahatero mentioned, you know, there are people like who, who experience bad things, but they, uh, they don't, um, you know, they, they actually have a wise disposition and, and, and they still move in the right path. You know, um, um, Ajahn Chah mentioned like one of the reasons he was so wise was because he had, he had kind of had all sorts of terrible things to happen to him. So it wasn't just that he was clever. And I think that that's a great relief to know that uh, you don't have to be a genius to become enlightened. You, you just have to practice and follow the path. And um, that's that's a great relief. If otherwise, otherwise you would have to be kind of uh, predestined, and 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 uh, you have to have a good life. But the reality is, is we, we we get dealt the cards that we're dealt with, and it's how we play with those cards that is going to be wisdom or not wisdom. So uh, we we can suffer a lot and become wise. But however, it, it, it's still. The, the more wise thing is to, to not uh, afflict ourselves with suffering and to have good boundaries. So again, in this, in this verse that we've been dealing with today, the Buddha is telling us to have boundaries with, you know, to, to avoid fools and, and um, to, to safeguard our mind, to safeguard our heart. You know, so he, he, he's not saying that I should expose myself to the worldlings. I should ignore what they're saying. You know, I should just keep my attention on my own mind. Mm-hmm. And and this is very important, yeah. So, so I I would be happy that to listen to the Chan also, but he, he never shouted. He is from, coming from the Minnesota, where the black life matters. But he never talked. But anyway, now it's time up. But we are living in uh, the, in the discussion very contributive. Thank you very much uh, uh, for the participation. And due to the time limitation, I am going to sum up. Thank you very much again.